Hi, my name is Sherry with Gossamer Wings Designs, and I'm going to teach my friend Mad here a, uh, how to make a glass bead with a torch. First thing we got to do is open up the tank. Okay, and we're going to turn the nozzle on here. I'm going to turn the, I'm going to light the flame first. I should begin by saying that I've chosen my colors of glass first. I'm going to make Christmas beads with green, with uh, white dots on top, and then red dots on top of the white. here. If I turn it on too fast, it'll blow out the flame on the match. There we go. And I'll try to talk over the sound of the, of the uh, flame. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we've got a mandrel that I've dipped into bead release. And uh, you just shake it up first and you dip it into the bottle and you let it dry. Uh, there are two kinds of bead release. One dries in the flame and one air dries. This is the type that dries in the flame. And I just dipped these a few minutes before you got here. And, um, and so I'm going to dry it a little bit first in the flame. So I've got it going here, just getting it warmed up. And I'm going to start out making a green bead. So I'm going to get the... And Ned, do you want to lean over my shoulder? You want to move it closer because you really need to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so um, my, the hottest part of my flame is at the tip of the blue uh, pointed part of the flame. So I don't want to be un between the torch and the tip. I want to be at right at the tip or a little further out. And I don't want to shock my glass by putting it directly in the flame because it's going to shatter. Now the reason I'm having Ned sit behind me is because when the glass shatters it goes that way. So I always have people sitting behind me over my shoulder to watch. Okay, so I'm going to start out here about maybe six inches out from the flame and then just gradually work my way in, just get, letting that glass warm up. Notice that I've got one elbow resting on the um, armrest of my chair, and my other hand is resting on a custom-made uh, uh, wrist rest that I got from somebody who actually makes these just for this purpose. Okay, so I'm slowly bringing it in, and now my rod is starting to glow, and it's turning red. It's probably hard to see from that distance. But anyway, it's turning bright um, red, orange, it's getting all nice and melty. So now I can bring it down to that point where the uh, tip of the blue flame is. So I'm in the hottest part of the flame. And again, I'm going to make sure that my mandrel gets warmed up out here. Now, what I'm trying to do, I'm actually going to do this video a second time, I think, closer in. <clears throat> so you can see what's happening in the torch. So I'm um, making sure that this is dry, and it kind of changes color once it's dry. So I can see it getting a little different color, so it should be just about warmed up enough. Okay, so I'm going to bring that glass in, let it warm up. Now I want about a quarter of an inch of glass, all nice and molten, melty, before I put it onto the uh, mandrel. This thing in my left hand is the mandrel. Okay, so I'm getting this nice and melted. And um, when I put the glass to the mandrel, I'm going to have both of them at a 90 degree angle because I want the glass to come directly on the mandrel. So I'm getting, they're at a 90 degree angle here. So if I do it at an angle, it's going to really mess up what I'm, what's happening and I'll have to abandon the bead. Okay, so I'm keeping the mandrel parked below the flame, maybe about a half an inch below the flame, just keeping it just warm enough that the two will stick together. All right, so I got about a <coughs> half an inch of glass heated up, and I'm going to apply it to the mandrel and just slowly roll the mandrel <coughs> as the glass comes off of the rod. There we go. I've gone around one time. I'm going to go around again. Now these mandrels I have are not standard mandrels. Um, I wish I knew where to buy replacements. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but <laughs> the flame really dries out my throat. I had to close the window because there was a saw going in <clears throat> next door. Okay, so I just uh, smoothed out that out, the glass rod out because it was L-shaped, so I wanted to smooth it out. This right here is called a marver. 
and this is very, very hot, and so I can just lean my glass rod in there just to straighten it out nice. Okay, so now I'm switching hands with, um, with my mandrel, and I've got both hands on the mandrel. So as the fingers of my left hand twist the mandrel, the fingers of my right hand pick up the rest of the twist, so I'm continually rolling it toward me. So right now I'm just going to park it in the flame until it gets nice and hot. And I'm just going to let it sit. Just, just twist it, turn it a little bit. <laughs> Nick, can you open up this window for me? I don't think I'll hear the sock of this window. <laughs> As you might guess, you need a lot of ventilation for this project. Okay. And then, do you want to look over my shoulder and see this bead is completely orange. It's so hot. Now, the surface tension of the bead makes it want to become a sphere. And so I can just kind of park it here, and it's going to want to become spherical. And then as it gets a little lopsided, I'm going to turn it and let gravity do its job and bring whatever's fat on top coming down to the underneath side. And once it's spherical, I'm good to go. So I'm about there, I'm just gonna roll it away from the flame, let it cool down slowly. Okay, put that back in my left hand. Now I wanna put some white dots down because the dark green and the dark red are not gonna pop. They're not gonna show off. And so I want a contrasting lighter color underneath the red <laughs> to make it show up. <coughs> Okay, so once again, I've got to warm up my white rata glass, and I'm keeping my bead just below the flame because it needs to stay nice and hot. I don't want that bead to cool down all the way, or it's going to wind up shattering once I bring it back into the flame. Okay, so can you see the orange flare around that? That's called the soda flare. There's soda of some sort that's part of the glass, and it gives off this orange flare. So you can see that the rod is in the flame. Sometimes it's hard to tell where the rod actually is. Okay, so now I'm going to turn them again. I'm at a 90 degree angle. And these little knobs on this mandrel mark where my dots are going to be. So I'm going to use those as my marker. So I'm just going to touch my little white glass to it and let the flame cut off the glass. So I'm just pulling it away slowly. And I'm touching it and I'm just pulling it away slowly. So I've got three dots on there, and I think I want to add a couple more dots. So I'm going to go along, oops, along the edges of the bead instead of right along the equator. And the glass wants to become a round thing. So as you touch it, it comes away as a string, but then it just flattens back down towards the bead. So now, again, I've got an L-shaped rod of glass. I'm going to straighten it out for the next person to use it. And I'm going to put it down on my um, rod holder. So again, I park the bead back at the tip of that blue flame and uh, just gradually turn it because I want those white dots to sink in towards the green bead. And they're just going to naturally want to do that. It doesn't have to be spinning fast or anything. The glass just wants to, to come in towards the center of gravity. bumpy, just enough bumpy. Okay, now I'm going to warm up my red rod, and again, I'm parking my green and white bead just below the flame, and I'm going to bring my red rod in. Now, the red one turns black as it gets hot. Do you see the, how it's doing that? It's, it's dark. Different colors do different things when they heat it up. So now you can see how it's glowing orange at the tip. And I don't need to heat up so much glass when I'm doing dots. So I just have a little bit going on here, maybe about an eighth of an inch. And I am going to touch the red onto those white dots. And just go around. And you see how the flame just brings that, that string back down into the dot. And I'm trying to keep the bead below the flame. And I bring it up to the flame and then out. Bring it up to my red rod, up into the flame, and then bring it back down. I don't have quite enough glass on that dot right there, so I'm going to add to it. And you just basically want about the same volume 
of each color on your dots, assuming you want them to match. And then they're going to flatten out once I let, once I'm done with this particular part of the process. Okay, now I've got an L-shaped rod of glass. I'm going to straighten that baby out and set it down on my uh, rod holder. All right, now I'm going to park it back at the tip of that flame and just let those red dots melt towards the white dots. And I need the complete dots, both red and white parts, to be molten glowing. Because if only the top part is melted, they're going to pop off later. Okay, so it's still bumpy enough and I'm spinning it. I'm going to spin it away, letting it cool, cool down slowly. I'm going to turn off, it's no longer glowing, so I'm going to turn off my, my uh, flame and put it into my blanket and let it cool down. So I'm letting the um, bead cool down in a uh, fiberglass blanket that's made for this kind of prop process and um, that's going to let it cool down slowly so it doesn't shatter, so it makes for a stronger bead. Okay, thank you for watching and my next video will be a close-up of the beading process.